I think probably one of the most uh, defining challenges for me over the last years, I mean, I could say many years, has been the, uh, the situation we found ourselves with LOSC last year, um, close to relegation, um, and how you know, we changed things to be playing Champions League this year. Um, it's not only was a massive ch um, challenge, but it's one that we overcame by literally turning everything around. Mm -hmm. Could you describe that process? So obviously, uh, your, I presume your objectives, turn the ship around, let's start winning again. How did you do it? Uh, there were some fundamental changes in the club. Um, obviously, we, we switched coaches. Um, also, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm surrounded by somebody called Luis Campos, uh, who's a very close friend of mine, but also worked with me. And he's sort, sort of the, um, the gatekeeper to the way we find players, we bring players to the, uh, to the club. Um, we were missing experience in the club uh, on the pitch. So that's the first thing we tackled was experience on the pitch. The second thing is we brought in a coach that bought in into the playing style we wanted, the youth we wanted, the excitement we wanted, the results we wanted, and he's been paramount. As a matter of fact, he's just been elected best coach of the French League. Uh, so I think uh, we helped him help us uh, in that sense. So the coach was important, the players were important, um, and overall the management of the team and the club. Uh, we, we came closer to the fans. Um, we decided to implement things in a much more, uh, I was more involved, um, much more definitive way. So there was no gray zones anymore. Uh, and we literally went from, from a club that was struggling last year to stay in League One to a club that's finished second and, and qualified for Champions League. But all of that was really due to work talent, obviously, but how you harness that talent. And uh, that was all done by those different, uh, different things. You mentioned uh, one of the reasons there was you having a more active role, so there are no more gray areas, I suppose, in the decision-making yeah. lines, you know, who's ultimately accountable yeah. and responsible. Could you describe exactly what you feel that you did to make a difference over the course of this season? I mean, a club is, is quite, a, quite a complex animal, right? So you've got, you've got fans at, as a base, you've got football players as a talent engine, you have coaches, management, uh, and at every level you have to intervene as an owner in um, different ways. So with the, with the fans, it was clear to show them uh, that I care, um, that I suffer with them, but that I also enjoy. So the proximity was, was important. With the players, it was guidelines, rules, helping implement those rules um, that I don't necessarily make up, but make sure that there's no escaping those rules, but also make sure that there's the right motivation for them, um, the right objectives that are being fixed. With the coach and with uh, Christoph, Christoph Galti and with Ruiz, it's exchanging, it's being able to have an open conversation, uh, talk about things, never let things go too far, uh, help them make decisions or help them uh, make decisions that they think are the right ones but might be risky, sort of back them up in those decisions, say, listen, it's okay, let's do it and let's see what happens. Um, and I've, I've literally uh, trusted them immensely, they've trusted me and that, that's really turned the, the whole thing around. What did you learn uh, about yourself and about uh, the football business, I suppose, over the last, this process the last year? And if you had to start again and do it again, would you do anything differently? Yeah, there are two things I learned. The first one is on the emotional side. Um, I do feel a lot of emotions when I'm on a pitch, when I'm watching, when I'm living, especially with my own team. Uh, and I was trying to keep those emotions away. I was trying to keep them hidden. Um, I was trying to be uh, not cold, but pretty cool about everything. And it, it was probably misinterpreted um, in, a, in a sense that people maybe thought that I was not being affected. Um, and the fact was I was, and, and now I'm much more open about it, uh, good or bad. I kind of tend to show much more how I feel about things, how I feel about the club, my pride also to, 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 be, uh, to be an owner of this club. And then on the, the other side, it was communication. It was very linked, but I, I tried not to over communicate. I, I was really working on things rather than talking about them. And I found out that if you don't occupy the media space, somebody else will, and incorrectly so very often. And so I started speaking more often, um, essentially saying things the way they are, not the way people would interpret them. And those are the two, probably the two, two big lessons I got from, from the last 12 months or so. Finally, I wanted to ask you about French football in general. Um, and if you could give me uh, your sort of top line reasoning for investing in a big way yeah. in, in owning a club into LFP, into the French Football League. Why did you do it and where do you see this going? The, the tagline of the league that I didn't make up, I mean, the, 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 
the marketing guys that the league made it up, is, is the, talent of, uh, the, the league of talents. And that's really what it is. Uh, it, it's, over the last years, it surpassed Brazil in terms of exporting players. Uh, it has phenomenal talent. Uh, I mean, you know, France won the World Cup because of its players. Uh, some of the big, biggest clubs in Europe have French players make, making a difference. Um, so it, it is this unbelievable um, pop of talent that, that you, know, you can get into, that you can build on, you can build a club on, you can build results on. And as a result, we, we end up with the second youngest team this year, uh, finishing second, qualifying for Champions League. And that's a credit to what France really is. France is, um, you know, it, and, and I hope that we'll be able to retain those players longer so we can be competitive also on the European level. But today, um, you know, there's no question that we probably represent the most exciting league in the world in terms of youth talent on the pitches. And, and you can tell by where those players end up, end up uh, going or what they end up achieving. Mm -hmm. Gerard Lopez, thank you very much indeed.